So what I'd like to do next is sort of go over the way a relational database works. Let's just see again, how many people work with relational databases or have, okay, so a fair number. So this might, this will likely be review for some of you, but I think what, what my hope is to get out of this is not so much how to design a relational database, but more, did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, so no, it's, it's definitely a trade-off and it, and it depends on the organization. But I think, and, and what I'm hoping that we'll get out of sort of reviewing how relational databases work is that a lot of the, the benefits and why relational databases are so powerful can be sort of written into even using an Excel spreadsheet. Like there are ways to sort of take, not necessarily a relational database itself, but some of the, the sort of positive things that relational databases do and, and model that in something easier, or not easier, but something you know that an organization would be more likely to use, like Excel or a Google Doc. Like there are ways with um, with H lookups and V lookups to link multiple tables together in Excel, and so you can kind of, if not create a relational database, at least mirror some of the things that are beneficial about relational databases and make something that's that's helpful for the the organization. Does that kind of answer your question? Okay. And, and we, can, we can definitely interrupt me at, at any point and we can talk more about this. I want this to be sort of a, a collaborative thing where we can, can think through some of these problems together because it's definitely, there's, there's no like right solution to this. These are, these are just sort of ideas that I think might be helpful in terms of, of trying to, to balance um, schematizing things and, and the flexibility. Of the so, as soon as you start trying to organize data to put in Excel, a number of problems usually start to arise. So if we have a simple data or table like this, we have people and a type of pet they have. This is pretty straightforward. There's a lot we could do with this. We could see who owns cats, who owns dogs, how many pet owners have a dog, how many have a cat. And it works pretty well, but the problem is that this data, as soon as we start getting something like this, where Bob has a cat and a dog, our data sort of ceases to be flat to a certain extent. Here, it's nice and flat. We have one person, one animal. The two sort of correspond. It's a one-to-one -one relationship, and so it, it works very well. There's a lot of sort of computation we can do on it, a lot of analysis. It's easy to put things in. But then as soon as we sort of start getting this kind of stack structure, where we now have one person, we have a, a one-to-many relationship. So we now have Bob, who has a cat and a dog, with, and they each have names. So you can see how very quickly, as soon as this data starts stacking vertically inside the cells, it becomes difficult to sort of, to manage. It becomes much more difficult um, both to make sure it's inputted correctly and then also to query this data. So if you wanted to, let's say you were just working in Excel and you wanted to know how many people had cats and how many people had dogs. If you, in this one, if you sort on the pet field, you then get a nice thing where you have all of the cat owners in a block and all of the dog owners and then it's very easy to count or to use a formula with like a, a if statement or a sum it or something like that. But as soon as you get like this, if you now sort, this dog is gonna get lost because it's now sort of appended to that. Furthermore, it's hard to make sure that cat links to bins and dog links to Sparky. So you can see that this, this very quickly becomes sort of a difficult thing to manage in Excel. So there are a couple strategies that people oftentimes use for dealing with this sort of, with this sort of um, stacked data. So one of them is, is like we saw over here, to stack the data inside a cell. Another one that people try sometimes is to stack the data horizontally. So we get, so now we have pet one, the pet one, the name, and then pet two, and the name. This is, could potentially be a little better depending on what the, what it is that you're trying to get out of this. But once again, it now becomes difficult to sort out all of the, all of the dog owners. Um, we, it does make it a little bit easier to see which name goes with which pet. 
But it also, another problem with this sort of design is that it creates a, a maximum. So we could put, you know, we could put 10 of these in and then say someone has 11 pets or 12, you then have to add additional sets of columns. So it doesn't, it doesn't really scale very well. Another potential strategy, one that, that I think will oftentimes work a little bit better, is to stack the information vertically. So instead of um, having it horizontally, we now just repeat the names and we can start adding more information. But there are, there are a couple problems that, that arise with, with this. First of all, if we have two people named Bob, it obviously becomes difficult. So one thing we can do to alleviate that problem is by having a unique identifier. So we could have an ID column. So this is person one, person two, and then we would repeat the three here so that we would know exactly who that person is. And it then becomes easier to do things like count all of the dogs and cats. Um, and you can use like pivot tables in Excel to sort of go back to the number of pets that each, people, each person has. How many people have used pivot tables in Excel? Okay, great. Pivot tables are, are great. I really, as much as I don't like Excel, I do really like pivot tables. They're a really easy way to sort of take in data and aggregate it or disaggregate it. Um, it's, they're sort of designed for this kind of thing. If you want to know how many cats each person has, you can aggregate them using pivot tables. So, so these are kind of the, the, the problems with these sort of flat tables is that, that data often tends to stack. You often have one-to-many relationships. Um, you have instances like this where people have multiple pets. What I meant to mention, sorry, that, that another issue that this has is if we have additional information, like say we have the pet owner's address, we then have to change it in all of these. So if, if Bob, if we have, imagine there's an address column here, and Bob moves, you then have to make sure that every instance of Bob gets updated. And you could, you could do that by sorting by that ID column and then making sure it's all together and, and filling down or something like that. But it becomes easy to have, you know, um, to have Bob with two different addresses. And then when some poor SI student comes back to it three years later, they're trying to figure out which address is the right one. And the phone book may be the, the only sort of way to solve that problem. 